Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I want to show you in this video how you can add textures to your portrait to really make them pop. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramney. I'm a French photographer from the beautiful city of Paris, but living in Florida. I specialize in cityscapes and landscapes. I make books. This is my latest books on Barcelona, but I love taking portraits also. And I want to show you a really cool retouching of this photo right here of my good friend Elric that I shot years ago. I think I took that photo 10 years ago. So we're in Photoshop. That's the raw file. We're going to make it super dramatic. I will show you at the end of the video how you can download the textures for free. It's really cool. So here I am. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of camera raw retouching. So this is a raw file in Photoshop. I just double click on it and I'm in the latest version of camera raw. So the first thing that's really off on this photo is the white balance. So usually what I do is I take this little picker and this was supposed to be white. So I'm going to click one time. Good. The photo is a little dark. So I did a very edgy light. I basically only had like two soft box with special grids on the, each side of the photo. So you can see he's not so much lead in front and he's very lead in uh, on the right side on the left side. All right. So I'm going to uh, add a bit of contrast. I'm going to open the shadows. I want to make this very dramatic. Maybe add some exposure a little bit. I'm going to add some clarity. I mean, this was an over the top of lighting. I want to make an over the top retouching and I want to make it even more crazy with some textures. Okay, cool. So, okay. Th so that's the raw file retouch. You can see, we can see the top of the photo, but I'm just going to add so many textures. And that's the thing that's amazing with textures. You can mix them up. So I'm giving you for free five textures, but you can make infinite composition with what I'm about to show you. So the first thing is I'm going to drag and drop. And again, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how you can organize your texture in Photoshop. So I'm going to drag and drop it here and uh, I am going to rotate it. So when you drag and drop texture, it's a smart object, meaning you can do uh, by default, it's got this little handle. You can move it around. You just put your mouse, you know, outside of one of these cores, you can move it around and I'm going to press enter. I want to zoom back out because I want to be able to position my texture right. So I'm going to press Z on my keyboard. Z is the zoom tool in Photoshop. And then I'm, I'm going to hold on the option key, which is the alt key on windows. So option key on a Mac, alt key on windows, and I'm going to zoom out. I am going to zoom out. It's crazy. All right. Then I, I need to get back to being able to change this. So I'm going to press command T on my keyboard, or I'm going to go to edit if you don't like shortcuts. And you can go to um, free transform. You see it says command T on a Mac. It's control T on Windows. And I can just put this at each corner. I can move it around, move, you know, and position this texture over our subject. All right. And sometimes it's kind of cool. Make sure you really put it everywhere. Press enter. And now I got a couple of solutions. I can use blending modes to get that texture in the photo. The two, the three that I use the most, and I always check all three, is multiply. Multiply, basically what it does is anything which is white or bright in a photo becomes transparent. The problem with multiply, it makes the photo very dark. There is another one that I love and it's called overlay. Ooh, on this one, overlay basically is just a really cool way to add construct to the photo. It's a cool way to blend in the image. So I think I'm going to go to overlay. Sometimes overlay can be a bit strong. So there is like a, a, a younger brother of overlay called soft light, which is the same effect, just softer overlay, soft light. But in this case, I want some drama. So I'm going to put it overlay. Now, when I drag and drop a texture, I always do two things. One is I add a curve, but it's a special curve. That curve, I'm going to press this little, um, square here is an arrow. And what that's going to do is that if, well, let me show you, if I don't press this, when I move my curve, it affects everything, the, the, the texture and the background. I don't want this. If I press this and I move this around, now it's only affecting the texture, which is what I want. So I want to make the texture maybe a little bit darker and a little bit brighter, just like what we call an S curve to add more contrast. The problem is that sometime when you add contrast, it adds saturation, which is not what I want. So one cool trick I always do that when I do curve adjustment on texture is instead of putting that layer into a normal mode, I'm going to put it on luminosity. So what luminosity does, so that's luminosity is very subtle. And what normal does, you see, it's more saturated. Luminosity basically only affects um, the lightness 
of the texture, meaning if it's bright, it doesn't add saturation. So same contrast, but it does not add saturation because I like to add my own saturation or take it out. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to click here. I'm going to between the curve and the texture and I'm going to add a UN saturation. And when you add an adjustment layer between a, a, an adjustment layer that already has this little arrow, remember that little arrow? It's going to, by default, going to make this on. It's just a little trick to speed things up. So on this one, let's see, do I add saturation? Do I take off saturation? I think I want to take off saturation. Do I add lights? So, and again, I'm only doing it to the texture. The original photo doesn't change. Of course, because it's a blending mode in overlay, it is going to change a little bit the you know the background photo but I'm really more influencing the texture I think I'm going to go like that so very subtle and you can see I love this about Photoshop you can see that's the texture by default that's with the curve adjustment not a, that's sorry that's with the curve adjustment so really more contrast and that's with the U in saturation not a huge deal but I want to take this to a next level so first thing first what I usually do is I go here and I add a little mask to the texture because sometimes when you use a texture, you can have like spots on his face coming from the texture. And I don't want this. So I zoom in on the, on, the, on the thing and I, on his face, and I go before, after. Yeah, you can see there's a little spot there. You know, it's not very nice for him. So I'm going to be for brush. I'm going to take a brush and, um, and I'm just going to, well, first of all, I usually take the te most of the texture out of his face. And I like to take a big brush, Z to zoom out again. And uh, so hold on, this brush is, remember in Photoshop, when you have a mask, white reveals, black conceals, okay? So I have a brush, it's black, but I forgot to tell you, it's at 30% of opacity. So it's not really black, it's kind of gray. And it just takes a little bit out of the, of the, of the, of the brush. And if you want to see the before and after of a mask, you hold on the shift key and you click on the mask, before, after. So I took a bit of texture out of his face. And let's see, maybe I do some more here, uh, you know, just on the rest of the body. Bef before the grunge, after the grunge. Okay, that's kind of cool. And you see there's a bad shadow there. I don't like that. That's why I'm also mixing with texture to put less attention on that shadow. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop that texture here on top. Make sure that layer is really on top. And that's a nice texture, which is really cool. But it's blue and I don't want it as blue because when I'm just going to start adding, you know, blending mode is going to add blue. So the first thing you need to do is position your texture. So I'm going to press command here. Remember, you can use shortcuts. I'm going to um, I'm not going to rotate. Actually, I'm actually, I'm actually going to make it way bigger because I like to hide this part here. So I want to make this part darker. And I, what I like about that texture is that this sort of leaks. Now, if you hold on, if you just ho hold on that handle and do this, it's going to it's going to make everything, it's going to make the texture really big. Sometimes I just want to make this go down. So it's a little power trick I give you. If you hold on the shift key, you can just drag this and it's going to stretch this texture, which usually uh, makes it that it's less scaled. And sometimes when you scale too much a texture, you can get some unwanting noise. So, okay, now the texture is in place. Um, I'm going to right click and I'm gonna rasterize the layer. I want this to be just a, not a smart object, but a simple image. Once you've done that, I'm gonna go to image, adjustment, and I'm gonna go to black and white, because I want this to be black and white. You can even play with the settings to uh, see what, what it does to the photo. I'm guessing the blue is gonna be the main one doing anything. It's not doing much. Oh yeah, it is actually doing something. Uh, you see, oh, okay, I'm going to make the blue a bit darker. It's going to give a more contrasty look. That's totally optional. You can just press OK. It's fine. So now I got this picture in black and white. And this time, instead of putting this one into overlay like we did, uh, I'm going to put this one into multiply. And multiply. So when I drag and drop this, you know, it, in multiply mode, it's very dark. I'm going to add a mask. And this one, I just want to use it for the top. So I'm going to take a big brush. And remember, this one, I'm gonna make it bigger. So any tool in Photoshop, you can make big or smaller by holding the control and option on a Mac or control and alt on Windows. And you left click and drag and voila, it's bigger. And now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take the effect off that, uh, that, that texture. So before, after, and um, it's seeing a little too contrasty here. Let's see here. And you can go back and forth. Yeah, that curve 
adjustment is a little too strong. So I can, I can lower the opacity of the adjustment. You know, it's the final, final retouching, you know, and I kind of like what it does. Look what it, it sort of hides the top of the photo. I kind of like that. And uh, this is the original one. I can double click here, maybe add even more clarity to it to make it even more punchy, make it a bit darker or brighter. I can add some magenta if I want to. You know, you can just play around and get the look that you want. But let me see, I'm going to select all of these uh, textures. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make group from layers. I'm going to call it textures because there were several textures. And boom, before, after. It's a pretty cool effect, pretty cool effect. Let me show you, I did a, another test here, uh, very similar. So um, I'm going to put this into a group. Uh, while I was trained before, after, you know, very similar effect. I just love that kind of look. Like it makes like portrait that really stands out really, really well, which I think is really cool. So one trick I want to show you is how can you get your textures in your library? So you have like me, you can drag and drop them. So basically it's very simple. You just go, uh, I'm going to go here. See, I have a whole bunch of things here in the library module. If it's not open, you can go to windows, make sure library is open. Uh, that's a really cool feature of Photoshop that came out. I'm going to create a new library that let's call it grunge textures. All right, so you see it's empty. So I'm gonna pull up the finder and you see I have, this is all the free textures I'm, I'm giving you, these four textures that you can mix to infinity. I'm gonna click and drag and drop them here and boom, it's gonna be there forever for you to use. All you have to do is click and drag them. Really cool trick. All right guys, I hope you like this video. I'm gonna give you for free my brand new principal photography. Click the link below the video. You're gonna get some of my best preset, the natural everyday preset that I use all the time. The black and white preset, I'm gonna give you all my black and white presets. Some of my best urban preset, which are really cool for this like very famous Instagram looks. I'm also gonna give you some skies that you can use in your photos. And this comes with like full training on how to install them and how to use them. You got brushes, you got profiles, it's all free. It's called the principal photography and that's uh, the textures that I use in today's tutorial are also included. Just click the link below. Also, if you think you're having trouble with composition, if you're struggling with selling your work or getting into galleries or doing books or getting published in the press, you want to take like magazine quality photos, you want to take like really some nice fun art things that people will appreciate around the world, come and join me on my free masterclass. I'm going to walk you through the things that matters the most over the last 15 years. That's the second link under this video and I'll see you there.